Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Travis. My dad, he's running around here somewhere. His name is Rick. This is the third video in the series on this 1960 El Camino. And we have a lot going on in this video this week. We're gonna be putting the engine in, the transmission in, the 327 with the 350 turbo. We're gonna be fixing and installing the factory drive shaft because the original transmission was a power glide. Obviously this one's a 350 turbo. We gotta do a little bit of finagling to get the drive shaft in there. We're gonna be finishing up the brakes, putting all the brakes together, bleeding the brakes, master cylinder, wheel cylinders, all that's gonna be finished up. We're gonna be painting a few odds and ends. So let's go ahead and get on it. We got a couple different things going on here today. Dad is working on the transmission so that we can mate it up to the 327 so we can put it in the car and I'm working on the brakes. So specifically what we're gonna kinda do to this thing is uh, Dad's working on putting a new front seal in it. He's also going to put a rear seal in it, which goes right here, the tail shaft. And then when we get it in the car, we're going to do a pan gasket on it. And on this uh, Turbo 350 here, we're just shooting from the hip. Um, we're putting the seals in it and everything, and we're going to put it in the car, but we don't even know the condition of this transmission. I think in the first video I said we bought this engine and transmission not knowing anything about them, not knowing the history of them. Um, so we don't know anything about that. We're gonna figure out if it works once we get it in and hooked up and try and put it in gear for the first time, so. We still gotta put two freeze plugs in the engine. We got our brake parts in. So I'm rebuilding the brakes. Um, this wheel cylinder is rebuilt. You can see the new dust boots here. It's got uh, new rubbers and all that inside there. That's looking good. Coming over here to the other side, I did this one. So I'll take you through one of these, uh, this little cutie. One inch in the rear, one in three sixteenths in the front. So I'll take you through rebuilding one of these and put it on there. It's, uh, I'm sure uh, probably a lot of you guys that are watching this have done this before, but uh, we'll just go through one. It's, it's always kind of fun and interesting. We have our aluminum slides. Here's our two cups and our spring. So we'll go ahead and set the spring in there. And what I like to do is take a little bit of brake fluid, just kind of pour it in this cup, lube it up a little bit. Pour the rest of it into this one. Trying to keep everything clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. The cone side goes inside. So the smaller side of the cone faces outside. And when you're putting it in, you want to be careful to make sure that that cone is pressed in. So there we go. We got one side. put our slide in, our aluminum slide. Kind of a tricky game, kind of. Your dust boot. Gotta stretch it over there. They fit kind of tight, which is good. Boom. One dust boot, your second one. Bingo. And there it is, all nice and tidy. Check this out, you guys will think this is interesting. <laughs> you see that right there? This can of brake grease lubricant is my dad's and this is 35 years old. This is a 35 year old can of brake grease and look at that, I'm about to use it. We, I've been using this same tube of brake grease since I was a kid. The same orange brake grease and we've never ran out. Put it on the threads there so that it is easy to adjust in the future. Go ahead and put our, our nails in. Then I set them on the nails. Look, I, I love old stuff just as much as the next guy. I mean, if maybe you've seen my YouTube channel, I don't know. But I'll tell you right now, disc brakes are the way to go. They are so much easier to maintain, to fix, to replace, to work on. Disc brakes really were an advancement in, in society. This is where having a brake tool comes in really handy.
So now that all the brakes are pretty much sewed up, we're getting the motor off of the engine stand and we got to take the flywheel off, which is what dad just did. Got to punch two more brass freeze plugs in the back, which you obviously can't do on the engine stand because it's in the way. But you got to admit that motor looks pretty snazzy. Couple of seals, couple of gaskets, a little bit of spray paint, a little bit of chrome. It's basically a crate motor. Now we can hobble the tranny over there, get a couple of the bolts started, tighten it down, and she's about good to go. All right, so what Dad and me are doing now is we're working on the drive shaft. So this is the original drive shaft. We ordered a new carrier bearing for it, but this yoke, this is the original yoke, won't fit in this transmission. The yoke on that drive shaft will fit into that transmission, so you can see what we're about to do. We're about to swap them out. Go down. What? That's not on there, Senator. Yeah. Gosh. Whoa. Are you sure that that uh, is big enough? Mm. My, I don't think it's big enough. Something. There it goes. This drive shaft has snap rings, you can see. So we're just trying to get the other snap ring out of this side. There we go. So we'll keep them snap rings. That won't be too bad. That's, that's good, that's good. Go up. There you go. So all the brakes are together on all four sides. I wanna clean up the drums a little bit. We still have to clean the bearings out, repack them, get them all greased up. But these kind of flash rusted the uh, surfaces where the shoes ride, so I wanna clean that up. Freshly cut drum. That's not too bad. You can hear it dragging some. Dad's got the uh, bearing soaking in gasoline to get that old grease off, and then we'll repack them. Hand me that other bearing and then you can tap that other tap that seal in there. Here's this one. Should do it. You want to make sure there's absolutely no grease or oil to get on these brakes because shoes are porous and they'll soak it up and then you can't get it out. So that's why.
There it went. Yeah. So dad's getting busy on the other side, um, packing those bearings so we can put that side together. And to get the old grease off the bearings, we just, we just soak them in gasoline. It's pretty efficient. This one's a hair bit smaller. We'll see if this one's going to work. Yeah. Grease. Years ago, it was for better for these bearings than this stuff. It was real. When I was growing up, they still had it around, and I'd get it, and I'd always return it because I didn't want it. It was real stringy. You didn't like it? It's old fashioned. Oh. I thought it was old fashioned then, but I found out that was the best stuff that you use for these bearings. It's real stringy. I forget the name of it. Mm. All right, she's ready for wheels and tires whenever we get wheels and tires. The brakes are done obviously, our brake hoses in the front, our brake hose in the back, our master cylinder is rebuilt and on. We can get ready to start setting the engine in now. So we got everything pretty much ready. We got all of our bolts for the engine mounts, for the tranny mounts. So we'll go ahead and start jacking this motor up and slip it in there. 40 years. Yeah, 40 years after 40 years. Dad was able to get this bolt kind of started. Fuel pump is in the way, so I gotta kind of hit it from the other side. But my holes aren't lined up too well. Uh, uh, yeah, you need to. Yeah, it's going. Okay, we'll go ahead and get your nut on it, and then jack, and then jack the motor up just a little bit. Let me see your hammer. it a little bit sideways it needs to come over sideways oh there you go no, let me see now we're seeing if this transmission mount is going to work or if it's off yeah it looks off here's where the holes are and there's the holes on that so the problem is, is that that tranny mount is up here and the tranny mount on the car is back here. So we got kind of a, a gap here. So this isn't gonna work. <laughs> but dad has had this in storage for I don't know how long and he doesn't know where he got it from. But this is exactly what we need. Somebody homemade this mount for a 350 at some point in its life. So this right here is what we need to be able to mount that that tranny too. So we're just going to pop this in and go ahead and use it. Oh, and we got a new uh, tranny mount that bolts to the tranny. That other one was toasted. Put that tranny mount on there. If you like seeing dad and me work together on these projects, the most helpful thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell. It helps YouTube know to push our videos to new audiences because the audience that watches is engaging. Thanks guys. Slip this up in there. There we go. There 
There we go. Yeah. Get your bolt in there. There we go. All right, so let me let it down. See, let me go looks like it. it's lining up. Does it? Yeah. Does it look like it's going to line up? Yeah. It's looking good. Scoot that motor over. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at that. See why we needed this other mount? See, the original ones ended maybe right here but we need it to go right there. Whoever did that, thank you. I'm gonna stay on here. She's in. The engine mounts are tight. The transmission mounts are tight. All that's good to go. Um, the last task of the day is to bleed the brake system. So right now we're about to bleed the master cylinder. I know the sun is kinda uh, making things kind of dark down here, but uh, I got it full of brake fluid and our little uh, plastic hose is going in there to help air it out. So, yeah. Yeah, a lot of bubbles. Yeah, bubbles. Yeah, it's it's sucking it down. A little bit. That one bled fast. I think it's good. Ready? Yeah. All right. Keep holding it. Keep holding it. You hear anything? Yeah, keep going. All right. Let me check the brake fluid. Man, it is dry as a bone. Okay, go ahead and do it again. All right. Go ahead. We're just trying the other wheel for good measure and we're getting some action. Hold on. Okay, keep holding. Keep holding it. Yeah, we're getting a good stream now out of this one. Yeah, keep holding it. Okay, can let up. Let's see if anything happens. I can, uh, I can hear it. The drum is starting to tense up. Which one are you on? The passenger side rear now. Is that the one you're not getting any fluid? Yeah. Oh! Sure, <laughs> All right. There she Where blows. All right, you can let up. <laughs> we set these tires on the car just for comparison. Got these off of uh, the 53 Chevy truck just to see what they looked like. Uh, these are Rally Sport rims. These are 15s. They're 8 inches wide. We're looking for four 7-inch wide Rally Sport rims because we think these are a little too fat. They're a little too meaty, a little, little too like racy. Um, they look too much like a truck tire. Looking for something a little skinnier and a little taller for this specific car. It fills the wheel wells a little too much, a little too thick. So this right here is the radiator that we got when we got the car. We're going to try and reuse this radiator. First off, we're gonna see if this one has any leaks or not, because if it doesn't, then we can use it and we can save money. Your other two options are buying a brand new aluminum radiator, um, which isn't a bad idea, but an aluminum radiator is 150 bucks. You're gonna spend 150 to $200 on an aluminum radiator. Or if this radiator has a problem, or you say, why don't you just have that radiator re-rotted and cleaned out at a radiator shop? Well, that's 150 bucks. 
It's about the same price as a brand new aluminum radiator that cools better and you know shiny and all that good business. If this radiator is good, we're gonna put it in there and save 150 bucks. We're just trying to save 150 bucks, okay? So how we're gonna test that is, you're wondering why, why do you have this Snappy Trap single bowl kitchen sink repair kit? Well, I just had this at my house for some other unrelated stuff I was doing. I'll put this upper hose here, put this lower hose here. I'm gonna connect them with this piece. So this piece goes in here. Oh, it actually fits, that, that's the first time I tried that. We got this lower hose, which is gonna fit over this end of our snappy trap sink repair kit, whatever thingamajoo. Go ahead and fill this bad boy up. <sighs> oh, leak number one. Huh? Leak number one. Leak. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, is there anything going on back here? I think that's just residual. I don't think that's a leak. I mean, if you got one leak, you can usually solder it, but you kind of got to play this game of, you know, if you got one leak in the brass radiator, there's probably five more right behind it. You might solder up one, pressurize it, and then something else might pop off. You know, you just, you just don't know. So, we will put our cap on. This is like a radiator pressure tester kit and I'm gonna hold my finger over that puncture while I pressurize it and see if there's any other leaks that I need to be looking at. So we're at, yeah, about seven. I don't really see any other leaks. It seems to be holding. See how it's spraying out now? Because it's under pressure. Doing my best. I think I pretty much got it held. I'm gonna pump it up to about 50. Okay. So we're, uh, we're up to about 13.5. We're starting to get a little bit out of that. Yeah. Hose. There we go. Well, we're setting it 13, pretty good pressure. 15 PSI now. It's holding? Yeah, I don't see nothing squirting out. You can see that thing just. So if you actually look at the spot on this radiator where it was leaking, it actually looks more like a puncture than, a, than having rotted out. This is the only spot it was leaking at. We're gonna do something that most of you probably have never ever seen on YouTube before. We're gonna rod this radiator out. That bottom and top tank is soldered on all the way around. So you gotta heat that solder up, get it out of there. You can take that tank off and then you can rod it out. You can run something through those cores and blow them out and that's rodding the radiator. See, there we go. Right there. Hit it. Hit it. As I'm heating it, just hit it.
This ought to work. Here's the cores. And we're going to see how plugged up it is by filling it with some water, getting the air in a rag and pressurizing it and see how much water comes out the end here. So you can see now how plugged is it. Good. Actually it wasn't too plugged, huh? Yeah, it wasn't too, it's not too terrible bad. Alright, go ahead and run your rod through it. Yeah. So we got our radiator here. You can see the top of this core, all that nice shiny brass in there. We got all of the uh, the galley cleaned out where this tank sits. Um, here's the tank. You want it really, really clean where you're going to solder so that it sticks. Then we're going to put this on and resolder it together. doing right now is hammering this these edges back over because you can see this big tab that goes all the way around you gotta pry it apart to get the tank up so we're hitting it back over we're wiping this seam down with flux just for added protection so you're supposed to do before you solder usually helps clean it Go ahead. Yeah, round two. Yeah, we got a leak right here. So if you look at this radiator, we got four more leaks. So you see where it's wet right there running down and wet right here? Right around here, we have a leak. Right around here, we have one. And up in here, so you can't see it, but right up where it meets at the top of the core, there's two pinholes. So we're gonna give it another whirl and see if we can solder them up and see what happens. This one held, so that's good. You See that one right there? That black right there, that's a, that's a crack.
All right, go ahead. So we got two leaks, two more. See, we got a leak here, and we got a leak uh, somewhere is over here. I saw it. This is what I was afraid we were going to run into. You know, sometimes I think running that rod through it might have revealed some weak areas. It's got two or three more leaks. You're just going to be chasing leaks. It's just what happens with some of these old radiators. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be usable. We're going to move on for now and work on this core support for the radiator. Uh, this is what goes right behind the grill, right in front of the engine that the radiator mounts to, your battery tray mounts to. Uh, we sanded it off. I'm wiping it down with some Prepsol just to get all the oil and residual grease off it. Even the grease from your fingers can make it to where paint doesn't stick. Uh, we're going to spray it on with a gun. Uh, so it's like black tractor paint from Tractor Supply. And it works pretty dang good. It looks good. Yeah, it's pretty tough paint, I'll be honest with you. And it'll make the whole engine bay look better, more complete, with the inner fenders being black, the engine being orange, this being black. Uh, it just It's a big bang for the buck, and it's not very expensive to do. So there's an aluminum radiator coming for this car now. So while that's in the mail and processing all that, we're dealing with another issue. Remember how earlier in the video I was talking about the drive shaft and how you can't put the yoke from the old one into the Turbo 350? So we pressed them all out and dad got a u-joint uh, that is going to fit this is the u-joint you need from switching it to a power glide to a 350. Um, the part number right here it's a napa part number two rings right here for an inside clip and then this one right here you see there's no ring on it uh, it's an outside clip and you can see how it's a little more longer where i'm holding it versus here also got our new carrier bearing on there the old one was absolutely it was just gone nothing you could do yeah nothing There we go. Got it all pressed in. This is the outside clip that I was talking about. Goes like so. Two outsides, two insides. Now that the drive shaft is all ready to go in, we got to do a little bit of freshening up on this rear end. Dad's taken off that yoke right here that um, goes into a seal, and that pinion seal is leaking. You can kind of see all that grease that's formed on the bottom there. And that's the great thing about working on Chevys. This pinion seal was on the shelf. You know, like the 46 International we have previous videos on, there's nothing available anywhere in the country for that. I mean, this, what, 40-year-old rear end has uh, parts available at a parts store, like in town. It, it's just awesome. It makes things so convenient and nice. And we're also going to pop the drain plug on the bottom of this, drain all that old gunk out, and put some new uh, gear oil in the back. The odds it's ever been changed out in its lifetime is pretty slim, honestly. So here dad is pounding that new seal in uh, just with a big socket, you know, is all you need. Now we get to finally set it back on the ground.
Now it's sitting a little bit lower and better with all that weight in her, looking a lot better. And someone in the comments mentioned this, and I kind of knew this beforehand, but uh, I did loosen these up. I had these tightened, these bushings, and then uh, you're not supposed to tighten them before you put the weight on it. So I loosened them up, I set it down, and now I'm going to go ahead and tighten them back up real quick. So I think last week Dad and me thought that we were able, we were going to be able to get this thing running and driving under its own power. We didn't quite get there, but that's no big deal. We got the engine set in, we got the transmission set in with a new transmission mount. We got the drive shaft put in it with a little bit of custom work there. We got the brakes finished up, and although the radiator ended up being a lost cause, um, I mean, at least we tried. I mean, we did everything we could to save it. Sometimes it just shakes out that way. We got another radiator on the way that we're going to put in it. We got the hoses for it. And aluminum radiators, you know, they cool a little bit better anyway. And since we live in southern Arizona where, you know, every day in the summer is over 100 degrees, it's, it's actually beneficial to have one, like legitimately. Thank you guys for watching. Dad and me really appreciate it. Thank you for all the feedback and the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And we'll see you guys in the next one.